Where the naval strategies of the Galactic Republic most often centred around the use of large capital warships and wings of strike craft, the Confederacy of Independent Systems generally preferred to use large flotillas of mid-range warships to create a powerful barrier in space, and no ship was more crucial to this strategy than the Munificent Class Star Frigate, originally designed for the Intergalactic Banking Clan as a means of defending their private communications network. The ship fell into service with the CIS after the Banking Clan joined the Confederacy and quickly became the backbone of the Confederate Navy, making up the bulk of most Separatist fleets. 825 metres long and 426 metres across, the Munificent class is built to serve as a powerful bulwark in battle formations, featuring enormous sheets of sloped armour plating across the bow and a broad, elevated command deck that provides the bridge staff with a wide view of the battlefield before them. The Munificent requires a relatively small crew, staffing only 200 personnel under normal circumstances but when employed for the purpose of planetary assault, the frigate can carry up to 150,000 deactivated B-1 battle droids. However, the Munificent is generally lacking in launch bays, with only some modified variants featuring a single small starfighter hangar, and as such, any battle droids carried aboard the frigate would need to be transferred to a docked C-9979 lander before being deployed to a planet's surface. The armament of the Munificent class is also configured to serve as part of a larger formation, with the ship's most powerful weapons being fixed into forward positions to help create a lethal crossfire in conjunction with other frigates. At the ship's prow, the Munificent carries a pair of huge heavy turbo laser cannons capable of dealing serious damage to hostile warships over a short time, and distributed across the rest of the ship, numerous lighter turbo laser arrays, as well as ion cannons and point defence lasers, provide the frigate with a defensive screen against hostile strike craft and smaller warships should they choose to engage the frigate at close range. Range. In battle, the Munificent class can be seen as something of a glass cannon, as its powerful forward weapons pose a serious threat to enemy vessels, but the frigate's lack of powerful shielding and shipboard fighter complement leaves the vessel extremely vulnerable when caught out of formation or outflanked. The Munificent class was by far the most common and widely employed vessel in the Confederate Navy, and thousands of the ships were assembled, commissioned and deployed into battle across the three years of the Clone Wars, as well as comprising the majority of most Separatist naval formations, the frigates were often employed as minor command vessels, and in some instances the ships were used for cyber warfare attacks, taking advantage of their extensive communications suites to jam enemy transmissions, hack into the interstellar holonet, or even broadcast anti-republic propaganda across hyperwave frequencies. From the first Battle of Geonosis to the ultimate fall of the Separatist Alliance, the Munificent Class Star Frigate was the foundation of the Confederate Navy, and across the Clone Wars, the ships attained numerous victories against the Republic across all corners of the galaxy. Following the culmination of the war, the model fell out of use with major military organisations, but the frigate continued to serve in small numbers with numerous mercenary and pirate groups, as well as some minor planetary governments and even the Rebel Alliance. As one of the most commonly deployed starships of the Clone Wars and the mainstay warship of the Confederacy, the Munificent class has become a visual staple of that era, representing not only a fierce and reliable warship, but a potent symbol of the Separatist movement. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.